This video is for the second topic of the cell processes unit. It's cell respiration. First of all, what is it? So respiration is a process that happens in all cells um, where glucose from food is broken down and the energy it has is released and stored in ATP molecules. Um, the one glucose molecule actually ends up moving the energy that it has into 36 ATP molecules and I'll talk about what they're for in a little bit but that's overall. Um, there's two types of respiration that we talk about in class and you gotta know the difference between them. Cell respiration is what the focus of this part of the unit is on which is inside of cells um, and it's what I just talked about above um, moving the energy from glucose into ATP. Mechanical respiration is the technical term for breathing. Um, so breathing in and out is mechanical respiration you just gotta make sure you don't confuse the two. Uh, the overall chemical equation for cell respiration is glucose plus oxygen. Um, these combine, that's why we breathe in actually, the oxygen combines with the glucose in our cells. Um, through a whole bunch of steps, um, the glucose is basically broken down into carbon dioxide and water. So the glucose is rearranged with the oxygen into these leftover pieces and the energy that the glucose has ends up into the 36 ATP. As always, the stuff on the left hand side are the reactants. The stuff on the right hand side are the products of the chemical reaction. Um, you should also know that the carbon dioxide and water are for, cell, um, for cell respiration are the waste products because they're not needed or the point of this process. They're the leftover pieces. Um, the point is moving energy from this molecule into those um, more numerous molecules. Uh, sometimes we learn that aero uh, cell respiration is also referred to as aerobic respiration. And aerobic is just a fancy word that means oxygen. And aerobic respiration is trying to say that this whole process, um, oxygen is required. for cell respiration. And you can see it's right there in the chemical equation. Without it, the reaction doesn't happen. Without it, you can't make ATP. You run out of energy and you all know if you don't have enough oxygen, um, you can't survive. So overall, this process happens in animal and plant cells, all cells except for bacteria, in a, in a structure inside of their cells called the mitochondria. So a typical animal cell can have 200 to 1,000 mitochondria inside of them doing this process, taking energy from glucose, which we get from our food, and moving it into ATP. So that brings up the question, what is exactly is ATP? Well, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. You don't have to know that. But it's basically just another energy molecule, like glucose. Um, and it stores uh, a, a small amount of energy compared to the glucose, so more convenient size. It's kind of, you know, you compare a big car battery, let's say, and the amount of energy in that thing to, you know, a, a AAA battery um, has a much smaller amount of energy. This would be like glucose, and the AAA would be like the little ATPs. It's just a more convenient energy form for the cell. The cell uses ATPs directly to run the cell's other um, chemical reactions to power them. So you move the energy, oops, power, move the energy from um, this big energy storing molecule into the smaller ATP storing molecules. Um, now the big thing that's going on between um, with cell respiration is its connection to photosynthesis from the other cell processes um, thing that we learned about in this unit. Um, You've got to understand the, ex the cycle of how the two processes, photosynthesis and cell respiration, are connected together. The source of the energy is um, the sun. And as you know, inside of plants, inside of the part called the chlor chloroplast, the little chlorophyll absorbs this energy and traps the energy in the chemical bonds of glucose. Oxygen is also produced and released by the plant as a waste product but this is where the energy is from the sun. Animals and plants use their own glucose. They take it into, when they need this energy to run the cell, they take it into their mitochondria and through the process of cell respiration, 
with the glucose, they break apart the glucose, and the energy that they have, so when the energy goes in, is put into the ATP molecules. The leftover pieces of these two molecules are carbon dioxide and water. Um, water is released by animals and breathed out as carbon dioxide. Um, eventually they get back to plants and they can be reused to trap more energy and the cycle repeats. Finally, you should appreciate that the chemical reactions of cell respiration and photosynthesis are essentially the opposite of each other, which also comes from understanding this reaction. What one makes, so for example, cell respiration makes carbon dioxide and water and the ATP, but what one makes, the other one uses. So photosynthesis eventually uses carbon dioxide and water to make the glucose. And the glucose and oxygen that's made is used by cell respiration. So the reactants, I'll put R for reactants and products, end up flipping between the two processes. And that's it.